Oh. I'm the Reverend Mary Margaret Saxon, a priest in the Episcopal Diocese of West Missouri. I invite you to hear about two sisters who were prominent in the annals of Black history. They're widely known as the Delaney sisters. Sarah Louise Delaney, known as Sadie, born in 1889, and Annie Elizabeth Delaney, known as Bessie, born in 1891. While each was a pioneer professionally in her own right, they're known as the sisters because they were inseparable, never married and lived together for all of their, most of their long lives. Bessie lived until she was 104 and Sadie at the age of 109. What a span of history they lived through. Through the Jim Crow laws of the late 19th and 20th centuries, segregation, lynchings, and prejudice because they were Black and because they were women. What a story they had to tell, both in written words and in their actions. Their early lives were spent in the community of St. Augustine's College in Raleigh, North Carolina, where their parents studied, met, married, and began their careers at the college. He is a faculty member, and she is the chief matron. They had a large family. Sadie and Bessie had eight siblings, all of whom graduated from college and had careers. Their father, Henry Beard Delaney, was born in, to slavery on a plantation in Georgia. And their mother, Nanette Logan James, was born in Virginia as an issue-free Negro. That is someone who had some African ancestry, but whose mother was not enslaved. Henry Beard Delaney, later in life, became an Episcopal priest. And in 1918, he was consecrated suffragan bishop for colored work in the Diocese of South Carolina. The sisters remembered growing up in a family in which the church was central. Bessie said, all of the values that made us strong came from the church. It was religious faith that formed the backbone of the Delaney family. We were good Christians and God never let us down. I'll tell you something else, honey, she said. We were good Christians, good citizens, good Americans. We loved our country, even though it did not love us back. Both sisters began their studies at St. Augustine's to become teachers, and they were expected to leave their home later and did. Sadie left for New York in 1916, and Bessie followed two years later. Sadie later graduated from Columbia Teachers College and began teaching in an Harlan Elementary School one of the first black teachers in the city to teach home economics. As Bessie began to think about her future, she remembered something her mother had told her earlier. It went along the lines of, you must choose career or marriage. Don't spend all your time and money on a career if you think you want to get married. Well, at that point, Bessie decided to enter dental school. She graduated from Columbia University. Subsequently, she opened a practice in Harlem and affectionately became known as Harlem's Colored Woman Dentist. So there they were living and working during the Harlem Renaissance where they became active as a part of the Harlem culture and politics. After their father died, in 1928, their mother came to live with them until she died in 1956. Then the sisters bought a house in Mount Vernon, New York, where they lived out the rest of their lives together. Unexpectedly, while living there, an author, Amy Hill Harth, who had heard of the sisters' amazing lives as professional forerunners, as activists against Jim Crow, black discrimination, and as fierce supporters of women's rights, Ms. Harth wanted very much to meet them. 
Now that proved to be a difficult path because the sisters in their 100s weren't anxious to greet new people and they had no phone. But Miss Hearth tried a circuitous route through one of their neighbors who gave a message to Bessie and Sadie. Finally, the three of them met and began to have conversations about their lives and thoughts. Out of that collaboration came an exciting part of their lives, which in turn brought them notoriety. It was a book entitled Having Our Say. The Delaney Sisters' First Hundred Years, which was published in 1993. It was a huge success, being on the bestseller list for 28 weeks. I recommend it. The following year, they published the Delaney Sisters' Book of Everyday Wisdom. In 1997, a theater version of Having Our Say opened on Broadway, and later a film was made followed by an adapted series on TV. Bessie, at age 104, died in 1995. In the years following, as Sadie lived alone, she reflected on her life during that period and the book On My Own at 107, Reflections on Life Without Bessie. What lives they lived the history they were able to share with us, what prominent, thoughtful, amazing women they were. Thank you, Bessie and Sadie. Let me end with two quotes from Sadie. Am I going to change the world? Or am I going to change me? Or maybe change the world a little bit just by changing me. Life is short. It's up to you to make it sweet. <laughs>